Hello again, everyone. Um, today we're going to talk about the Technical Standards Committee, uh, what it actually is. Um, we're going to tell you about some of the standards that are actually in flight because the committee is up and running and operating now after a long preparation period. We're going to touch on a very important document that is in development right now, which is the uh, TSC roadmap uh, that we want your participation in. Uh, and of course, we want to explain a little bit about what uh, the services are that the TSC offers, because it is primarily a service to industry based organisation. And last, of course, uh, how you can get involved, uh, because that is very important to the proper functioning of any standards body. Um, I'm joined here today by Alex Fovell, who is a uh, founding partner of Two Hot Ventures, uh, and he's also one of the founding members of the Technical Standards Committee itself. Um, so we use standards in product development uh, to align ourselves with the direction that the rest of industry is taking. Uh, interoperability uh, is a word that you'll hear a lot through this presentation. Um, if you can align uh, with the way that other businesses are doing things, uh, and you'll see some very specific examples of that today with standards in flight, um, then you're already halfway there to providing additional utility, uh, which translates into value to users of any of your platforms, applications, or services. The Technical Standards Committee uh, is designed to ensure that there is a high quality benchmark uh, for the standards that, that come out. Um, users and enterprises, they expect this, this level of quality. Uh, and we've modelled ourselves on some of the largest organisations in the world. A favourite of mine uh, is, uh, is IEEE, which I actually had to make use of in my very early career quite, uh, quite a lot. But of course, what is unique about uh, the Bitcoin Association, TSC, is that it has an exclusive focus on Bitcoin SV. So the mission statement was our starting point in forming the TSC, uh, and we use it as a guiding principle. Anytime we need to make a decision, uh, adjust a process, uh, or you know, decide what direction we need to go, um, we always check that it is actually in alignment with, uh, with this mission statement, which is essentially to promote technical excellence and improve Bitcoin SV utility by enhancing interoperability through standardization. Interoperability is important because it allows applications to talk to each other. Uh, it allows uh, your users to essentially extract more utility so that they're not using a whole bunch of different siloed applications uh, in their day-to-day -day experience. Uh, they have integration uh, and things should just work seamlessly for them. So we're looking to facilitate industry participation in the development of these standards. The Technical Standards Committee is determined to make sure that these standards are well maintained and uh, published and freely available for everyone to view who wants to build applications. Counter to what a lot of people believe, standards actually increase the competition and accelerate the growth and uh, adoption of our technologies. You can think about this like shipping containers. They're very standardized, and they increase the trade uh, industry to levels beyond belief. Um, these core service areas that businesses will be providing, uh, when they hand off data, they can, really, uh, they can really interoperate the data between each other uh, so that users can either stay with companies they're more familiar with or transfer their data over to new services seamlessly. So technical standards are developed at all stages by experts uh, in, in the particular industry field. Uh, and when I say all stages, I mean right from inception in determining whether a standard actually even makes sense to uh, spend time working on or not. Um, we do it this way uh, so that, I mean, uh, again, it's about the, the enhancing of interoperability. We use that as a guiding principle in determining uh, what resources to, to, to throw at a standard. Um, but we leverage that expertise to get the highest quality of standard uh, uh, so that we can essentially build credibility for the users of the standard. That is actually you. Uh, this credibility will help uh, when you're dealing with you know, the serious players uh, in, in the world that, uh, that, that all, all 
companies that hope to grow to any significant size have to deal with, auditors, regulators, insurers, and of course, most importantly, your clients. So the services that the Technical Standards Committee provides are essentially a process, and it is a process that's intended to be as lightweight as possible. Uh, we provide tooling um, so that you don't have to go through what we've been through ourselves uh, many times over deciding what tool am I going to use for collaborative document authoring, uh, what are we going to use for version control, etc. We've been through that, we've done it, we've just given, uh, selected a, a set of sort of standard out of the box uh, uh, tool sets that we'll make available to you. You don't need to muck around making user, user accounts and that sort of thing uh, to use Complorts or whatever tool uh, you want. Importantly, also, we provide guidance in how to actually bring a work group together and get it operating effectively. Uh, and there are many resources that are available, including uh, you know, the provision of um, <coughs> coordination staff, technical writers, uh, etc. So our process is three stages. We have the first one, which is the submission phase. This is where a member of the industry uh, will uh, submit something that they think needs standardization. This is where the TSC is really only involved. They go through a checkpoint review, which ensures that the uh, proposal is technically feasible, it aligns with our objectives in the roadmap, and uh, it is actually needed in the rest of the industry. Once it is passed that checkpoint review, the TSC will form a work group, which will consist of uh, authors, uh, industry participants, and stakeholders, uh, and reviewers. They may also have specialists, depending on uh, what the standard is. The second phase is the drafting phase, which is exactly what it sounds like. This is where the author actually begins to write the first draft. We then have internal reviews, IP reviews, and potentially a specialist review. Once we've, we're happy with our first draft, it is published for public review, which is where anyone can uh, submit comments to uh, adjust these standards, uh, how the Technical Standards Committee will then incorporate that where it's necessary. The last phase is the, um, the finalization of the standard. This will then be published onto the website as a standard, and we'll monitor the, the industry to see how it's adopted. If it's adopted very well and very uh, consistently, it will be then go into recommendation, which is the final rubber stamp. If we don't see any adoption of it, it'll be withdrawn. So it's the market that essentially decides uh, what a standard is, uh, not the Technical Standards Committee, not the authors. Uh, but um, on the point of the process, our goal is to ensure that the experts that are actually involved in, in putting together a standard uh, are not bogged down by process. They should be spending 99% of their time actually working on the important technical detail. The rest is what the TSC is there to, uh, to facilitate and, and assist with. And to that end, the process that we have right now is iterative. Uh, in fact, we've already seen an example where um, the original version of the submission phase, the way we did it, uh, essentially became a blocker to people who wanted to start working on a proposal right away. Um, so we responded to that by uh, adjusting the process and creating a provisional approval state, which gave uh, access to, um, uh, to TSC resources whilst the, uh, the more kind of formal approval stage uh, uh, or submission checkpoint review sorry, stage uh, went through. So we will be updating this, um, uh, this process as we understand the needs uh, to ensure that it's as agile and lightweight as possible for the users of the TSC. So we're happy to announce our first standard that has been released today. This is the Merkle proof standard, and it was first described by Satoshi Nakamoto in section eight of the white paper SPV. Um, this provides inclusion proofs so that you can verify a transaction is valid without needing everyone else's transactions. If you were paying attention to Craig yesterday, this is what he was talking about. So we're happy to take the first small step into a truly SPV ecosystem so that the blockchain can grow so large it doesn't actually fit in a single data center. How do we use the Merkle proofs? Well, we've got to send it between all uh, participants in a transaction. So we do the standard thing of the sender sends a transaction to the receiver, 
This includes a Merkle proof of the inputs for the transactions that are used. Then the receiver forwards that on to the transaction processor, including the Merkle proofs as well. When the transaction processor sees the transaction confirmed in a block, that then uh, puts a Merkle proof back to the receivers of the money or data. Um, this would be so much more complicated if every single app was encoding Merkle proofs differently. But now we have this standard. Hopefully, it is adopted by the wider industry. This becomes super simple. So let's move on to the Technical Standards Committee roadmap. This is a, uh, a work in progress that uh, we want to encourage as much participation in, in as possible. But um, what's the point of a roadmap? Well, it's there to provide some guidance on um, the strategic and the technical direction that the rest of the industry is going in. So if you're coming in as a, as a new participant who wants to build some application or service, you've got some understanding of what uh, other people in the ecosystem are doing, and then you can make a more informed decision about whether to align uh, or go in a different direction. Um, it's in very early stages of definition right now. Um, the TSC uh, put together a, an initial draft of the roadmap and, and, and entered some items. It's actually gone through an iteration of public review already. But that was intended to be a starting point, uh, a, a template, I suppose, to get people thinking uh, about what was actually important to them. Um, it's intended to be an open and consultative process. Uh, and in fact, the roadmap is back in public review uh, right now. It's published on the TSC website, and we'll show you where to find that uh, towards the end of the presentation. Um, so one of the big whys of a roadmap, what does it actually give us? Uh, from the TSC's perspective, uh, it's pretty important because it helps us to understand how to allocate and prioritize resources. Uh, but the dependencies are the important part because um, you know, so a lot of standards uh, depend on something else. Um, the Merkle proof standard, for example, is a really fundamental unit, uh, a fundamental data structure to Bitcoin, and many other standards will use a Merkle proof data structure within them. Uh, so, of course, you need to do one before the other, otherwise, you end up with a standard that has this big undefined uh, kind of hole in the middle of it. So, to create our roadmap, we came up with a framework that we feel is. Uh, very good to actually uh, develop something so complex. So we started with areas of the industry that we think need standardization. And based on those areas, we then uh, created work streams to focus on what objectives and goals we have for each of those industries. We then uh, look at prior art and proposals that are potentially um, going to depend on the next stream. Um, and these are not standards that are in flight or in process. They're just things that we need to look at and consider to when we actually put them in the stream, then create the uh, standards themselves. These are in progress and in flight. Okay. Our five core areas that we identified are wallets, where we're looking to improve security and usability of them so that they become adopted throughout the world. Next, we have client services, which are actually APIs server-side, which your Bitcoin client will interact with. Then we have on-chain data, which includes tokenization. Don't worry, we're not creating a new token protocol. This is just how we can exchange tokens and ensure that non-standard tokens uh, don't break everything else. Uh, we also have regulatory compliance, where we're looking to drive uh, this through so that all of the startups building on BSV are in compliance with their local laws. And we also have mining, where we're looking to aid uh, miners and transaction processes in commercializing their services on top of Bitcoin. So let's take a look at the individual streams and some of the uh, more specific areas that we've identified. So firstly, wallets. Wallets are, are the primary user interface uh, for a, um, uh, a user of Bitcoin, and you know, it's their view into the Bitcoin world. 
So um, the first area is direct payment between wallets. Uh, so this is a you know, real peer-to-peer -peer payment. Uh, I want to pay Alex because he, uh, he bought me dinner last night. Um, then, of course, there are uh, customer to merchant uh, interactions, which can look slightly different. Um, and so they actually need a, a process of their own. And then how do they verify uh, these payments, uh, either in the moment uh, at, the, at the time of the exchange or afterwards with Merkle proofs? Um, and then, of course, uh, a data standard for attaching various metadata to, um, uh, to, to a payment process. Um, uh, for example, invoices, receipts, things like that. You can already start to see the sort of chain of dependencies because an interaction between a merchant and a wallet probably uh, needs this, uh, this payment metadata uh, standard. So the roadmap is helping us to kind of map those dependencies out. And that means when someone comes and says, hey, I want to work on number two on this list, we go back to them and say, well, in order to do that, you're going to need to be able to do number four, the payment metadata. Uh, are you interested in working on that? Or uh, should we try and uh, see if we can find some people who are? And finally, uh, a login protocol. A wallet really is a representation of an identity, uh, and it makes it a prime candidate for a user of an authentication protocol. So imagine being able to use your Bitcoin wallet rather than your Gmail account as, uh, as, as an author, uh, authentication mechanism or a source of authentication for any website in the world. Secondly, a lot of the wallet services actually depend on server-side services. Uh, in some cases, the user of the wallet, if they really want to, can run these services themselves. So first is how do wallets actually talk to each other? A lot of the time, they're behind firewalls. Uh, we've got some prior art in this area with SPV channels. There might be other solutions to the problem as well. Um, second, uh, how do wallets actually uh, detect fraud? Uh, how do they protect themselves against it? Uh, another example is double spend notifications, which is a server-side service that you can subscribe to from uh, a miner, uh, possibly other participants. Um, how do I construct a transaction uh, that I know is going to get accepted by the Bitcoin network? Well, that uh, is partially dependent on the fee policies of, uh, of different miners. So how do I actually get that information? Um, how do I learn about different events that have happened with respect to a transaction? Uh, well, that's uh, usually a callback interface style um, service uh, and double spends. Uh, and SPV proofs are sort of candidates or examples of, of why you might want to understand or hear about the life cycle of a transaction. So again, you can see another dependency there between point 0.4 and point 0.2. And lastly, how do you actually find all of these services? Um, service discovery is, uh, is a critical mechanism, uh, particularly if I use a particular service. Alex uses uh, a different version of that service. If I want to interact with Alex, I need to know how to find his version of said service. So for on-chain data and tokenization, we're also happy to announce that our envelope spec is in public review. So if you want to go and check it and uh, submit some comments, we would really like your feedback, because as we keep on saying, this is an industry-driven uh, organization and process. Um, we're looking to uh, have a standard protocol for token representation and exchange, but also extend those so that they're protected in future use cases. Like I said earlier, we're looking to wrap non-standard tokens so that services can be interoperable with tokens that they've never seen before. And we're also looking to standardize the MetaNet data structure so that you can browse the MetaNet as you would a website, and uh, effectively like a, a, a Bitcoin browser, uh, so you can view all the on-chain data. Uh, everyone's favorite topic, regulation and compliance. Uh, we've actually identified recommendation 16 for VASPs from uh, the Financial Action Task Force. Um, and we're hoping to ensure that our startups in this ecosystem are compliant with that. We need a data interoperable service so that uh, you can transfer digital assets between these service providers, but also transfer identity information between these service providers and identity services. 
And lastly, mining interoperability. This is probably uh, the least developed and one of the most fluid areas because the scene, uh, the, the mining landscape is changing rapidly and as transaction volume increases, uh, there'll be quite a lot of shifts in paradigms. Um, but this is about miners to help uh, well, agreeing on, um, on common APIs for users to interact with miners uh, so that the users don't have to implement a different one for every miner uh, and uh, standardizing exchange of, of data between miners when, uh, when they want to. So most importantly for our point of view is how can you participate? Um, the, um, Roadmap is currently open for public review. Uh, it's published on the, uh, the TSC website. We'll, uh, it's up there at the top, but we'll show you a bigger version in a moment. Um, so please get involved, because we're here to facilitate the, uh, the industry. And our success actually relies on the uh, stakeholder participation. So um, please review. We want your input. Uh, you can find all of these things that we've talked about today on the website, tsc.bitcoinassociation.net. The Merkle proof standard, which has gone into publication phase today. The envelope spec, uh, which has actually had huge industry participation. So if you are building an application that relies on data exchange, uh, if you adopt this standard, half the work is already done. There will be numerous applications that, uh, that you'll be able to exchange data with and understand. And finally, of course, the roadmap, which you will find uh, uh, on the TSC website. So get involved. This is down to you. If you don't identify something to us, it might not happen. Thank you very Thank much. You.